So previously we've learned about a cyclic subgroup. Now we want to talk about the idea of a cyclic group itself. So let G be a group. We say that G is in fact a cyclic group if there exists some element was called little g such that big G, the whole group, is equal to the cyclic subgroup generated by G. So if that little element generates everything inside of the group G, we say that it is a cyclic group. And so of course cyclic subgroups are themselves cyclic groups in their own rights, but we say that a group is cyclic if it has a single generator. And that's what we call this element. Uh, this element that produced the whole group, we call it the generator of the group. Now let's look at an example of some cyclic groups, for, for example here, right? Uh, let's take the integers with respect to addition. We've seen previously that the set NZ, NZ uh, which is the set of all multiples of N inside of the integers. So like, for example, if you took 2Z, we're talking about you have all of you know, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, all of these even numbers. We also want their negatives as well. So you get like negative 2 going downward. So 2z. We've proved previously that this is in fact a subgroup of z. But I want you to realize that this right here is just the cyclic subgroup of 2 generated inside of z. And so, and this is, this is true in fact in general, that when you take the group in Z, the subgroup, this is just the cyclic subgroup generated by N inside of the integers. And so again, 2Z is an example of such a thing right here. Now in particular, we prove this for any integer N, um, which there are some notable, some very important uh, special cases to notice here. So for example, when you take N to be zero, you're just gonna get zero Z, which of course is the same thing as the cyclic subgroup generated by zero, which would just give you multiples of zero, which is just zero. This is the trivial group. This is the trivial subgroup. And I want you to be aware of this in general, that if you take the cyclic subgroup generated by the identity of the group, you'll always just end up with a trivial subgroup. But with the integers, what happens if you use as your, as your generator the element one, right? What if you take one Z? One Z would be the cyclic subgroup generated by one, uh, but one Z, of course, is just the same thing as, I mean, it's not what you put a little baby in. What I mean here by one Z is that this would be the entire integer group here. It's the entire, it, you get all, all multiples of one would be all integers. And so this shows us that the integers with respect to addition is a cyclic group. It's generated by one. Um, it's also generated by negative one. Uh, it turns out that this has two generators, both one and negative one will act like generators. Uh, because the thing is when you have a cyclic group, generators are not necessarily unique. Uh, we'll get into that very, very soon here, but a group is gonna have multiple generators. One clear point is that if you have a generator of a group, of a cyclic group, its inverse will also be a generator of that group. So both one and negative one act as generators for the integers. And so this, the set of integers under addition, Z, is often, oftentimes referred to as the infinite cyclic group. Um, and so if you ever hear me talk about the infinite cyclic group, I'm talking about the integers with respect to addition. Why does it get this other name? Well, we've, we've actually talked about a lot of finite cyclic groups. We'll talk about some more. But when it comes to infinite cyclic groups, this group is unique. The integers under addition is the only infinite cyclic group, which is why we call it the infinite cyclic group. And what I mean it's the only one, what I'm saying is if you find a different infinite cyclic group, I can argue that it's essentially the same group as the integers under addition, a term we call isomorphism, uh, something we'll define and talk about much more later in this series. Uh, so speaking of finite cyclic groups, let's give a conversation about those. Consider the group Zn under addition. Uh, we can, you know, we, I don't actually remember if we talked about these or not, but we, we can define them similarly. If you talk about the group MZN, this is going to be the multiples of M inside of ZN. So there's going to be reduction uh, mod N in that consideration. But if you take MZN, you just take the multiples of M in the group ZN, this is just the cyclic group generated by M. And so this uh, will give you an example of such a thing. Let's consider the group Z6. And if you take two Z6, we're looking for those multiples of two when you're working mod six. So you get zero, two, and four. Notice that the next one would be six, which is just zero again. The next one would be eight, which is just two again. The next one would be 10, which is just four again. And just repeat itself over and over and over again. So 
2z6 is this subgroup right here. And this right here is just, that's a really long equal sign in case you were wondering. This is just the subgroup generated by 2 viewed as a subgroup of z6. So this is the subgroup generated by 2. But also, this is the subgroup generated by 4, as 2 and 4 are inverses of each other. 2 and 4 will both generate that. So let's think about that one for a second. If you're looking at zero and four, uh, the, the subgroup generated by 4, you're going to have 0, you're going to have 4. You're going to have 4 plus 4, which is 8, but reduces mod 6 to be 2. You're then going to have 2 plus 4, which is 6, and you get the identity, and it'll cycle around each other over and over and over again. This is actually why we call them cyclic groups or... Uh, people, people in the you know UK sometimes call it cyclic groups and things like that. Sort of a European pronunciation. But the idea is the elements of this group form a cycle. If we think of it, kind of like the following, right? You take two plus uh, zero plus two is going to give you two. Then you take two plus two, which gives you four. And then you're going to get four plus two, which gives you zero. Then you're going to take uh, zero plus two, which is two again, and then to four, and then all the cycle as you add, as you add, as you add two, 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 over and over and over again, you spin around in the cycle over and over and over and over and over again. And but whoops, put that put that line back there. And then taking negative two because you had the inverses just means you're going in the cycle backwards. You know, so are you going like a clockwise or counterclockwise rotation? That's all that that's going on there. And so the same thing happens with four. Uh, when you add four to things, you're just moving on this on this same cycle over backwards, 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 backwards. And so cyclic groups get their name because of this sort of cyclic pattern, this pattern of cycles that's happening right here. Now, this is just an example of subgroups when we look at Z6. Uh, in general, though, just like with the integers, if we take the subgroup generated by one inside of Zn, that'll produce every single element in the group. And so the group Zn is likewise generated by one, just like the infinite cyclic group, the integer Z. Um, that also means it'll be generated by negative one, which really is just going to be n minus one when you work mod n right here. Now, it turns out, though, on the other hand, unlike the integers whose only generators were one and two, when you work with integers mod n, you can actually get lots of different uh, generators. It turns out that they, they can be quite common. Uh, so, for example, we work with Z5. I claim, you know, so Z5, this is the subgroup generated by 1, which would look like 0, 1, 1 plus 1, which is 2, plus 1, which is 3, plus 1, which is 4, plus 1, which is 5. Up, oh, that's just 0. gives you everything. But this is also the same thing as 2, the cyclic subgroup generated by 2. The idea here is the following. You get 0, you get 2, plus 2, which is 4, plus 2, which is 1, plus 2, which is 3, plus 2, which is 0. Notice how Z 2 got everything as well, but not just 2. What if we look at the cyclic subgroup generated by 3? You're going to get 0, 3, 6, which of course is 1, plus 3, which is 4, plus 3, which would give you 7, which reduces to 2, and then 2 plus 3 is 5, right? Uh, what about 4? The cyclic subgroup generated by 4. Turns out that's going to do it as well. You get 0, you're going to get 4, plus 4 is 8, which is 3, plus 4, which is 7, which is the same thing as 2, plus 4, which gives you 6, which reduces to 1, and then 4 plus 5, sorry, 4 plus 1 is then 5. You see like this. So when it comes to, when it comes to the, cyclic, uh, the, the cyclic group of order 5, aka Z5, it seems like every number was a generator. Um, there was, of course, one notable exception. If you take the subgroup generated by zero, this will only produce the trivial subgroup. So zero, the identity can, can't be the generator here, but you get that every other number, one, two, three, four, are generators. Uh, and then one, one, one other example to kind of compare this to, if we look at Z6, you get the subgroup generated by one. This is going to give you zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then six again, right? And then you take the subgroup generated by negative 1, which, of course, is just 5 in this context. You're going to get 0, 5. Then you'd get 10, which reduces to 4. Then you're going to get 9, which reduces to 3. Then you're going to get 8, which reduces to 2. Then you add 5 to that. You get 7, which reduces to 1. And then 5 plus 1 is 6. So those are both generators. But on the other hand, if you look at other elements, like say the cyclic subgroup generated by two, we already saw that that was the same thing as zero, two, and four. I want you to convince yourself that would be the same thing as the subgroup generated by four in terms of mod six, right? We said that one. If you take the subgroup generated by three, that's the only one we haven't considered yet other than zero itself. 
In that case, you're going to get 0 and 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. So 2, 4, and 3 don't, they don't, um, they don't produce everything. They only produce, they produce proper subgroups. But 1 and 5 produce the entire thing. So determining whether a number is a generator for a finite cyclic group is a little bit different thing. And it turns out it has a lot to do with GCDs, whether a number is going to be a generator or not. So for example, the generators of Zn are going to be all those elements which are co-prime to n. Notice what we have here, that 1 and 5 are co-prime to 6. They generated 2, 3, and 4 share a common divisor of 2, 3, and 2, respectively. So does, and then, of course, 0 also has a common divisor um, with 6, which would be the GCD would be 6. Um, so 1 and 5 were co-prime. 2, 4, and 3 were not co-prime. But when you look at like 5, for example, 5 is a prime number. So other than 0, all the numbers were co-prime to 5. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so what we see happening, uh, what we see happening in general then is that if you have a number p, which is co-prime to n, then by the Euclidean algorithm, you can write 1, which is the GCD, as a linear combination of p and n. So you get some a p plus b n. But if you reduce this number mod n, you're going to get a p. So this tells you that 1 is a multiple of p. So if we kind of summarize the observation of the Euclidean algorithm here, if you take the cyclic subgroup generated by P, this of course will contain the element AP, which we're saying in this cyclic group is the same thing as one. And so since the cyclic subgroup generated by P contains one, it has to contain the cyclic subgroup generated by one. But as we mentioned earlier, the cyclic subgroup generated by one is all of Zn. And if a, and you know, as, as the cyclic subgroup is contained in Zn itself, equality is forced. And you see that Zn is generated by this element P. So anything that's co-prime to the modulus for these cyclic subgroups will be a generator. Anything that has a common divisor will not be a generator. And that's the basic, uh, that's the, that's the basic argument for finding generators for finite cyclic groups.